On today's episode, I'm going to show you how I made these brackets to hold my netbook onto my portable electronics workbench. I'll show you how I designed them in Tinkercad, 3D printed them, and then assembled to my box. I'll show you all of it on today's Film of Friday. Film of Friday is brought to you by the generous donations of my Patreon supporters. Thank you so much. If you want to help support Film of Friday, please consider donating a dollar a month through Patreon. I opened Tinkercad.com, my favorite design software for 3D printing. There's the original design. I'll, slid it, I'll slide it to the side here, and then I'll bring in the ruler tool. I'm going to make a new one from scratch. Brought in a block element, make it 100 millimeters tall and 36 millimeters wide, and it's going to be 20 millimeters thick. So that's the basic shape I want, but now I want a rounded edge to this. So I brought in a round roof piece. That's what they call it. Flipped it on its side. Put it on the end, and now I'm going to make this 36 millimeters wide. So now it matches up to the block. Now I just want to slide this in. You can see it's a little bit recessed, so I got to bring it up from the bed. And then it's a little too deep, so I got to set at one millimeter spacing on the grid. So one click of the arrow, and it's in position. So now I just needed to group these two guys together. So I just grabbed them both, grouped it, and now I've got my basic block that I'm going to work with. This is the shell. Now I duplicate it, and I take the duplicate, slide it to the side, and make this one 28 millimeters. So now it's 8 millimeters smaller, which is going to allow for the edges. And then I'm going to make it a hole, drag it back into the original block, and I'm going to offset it 3 millimeters from the bed. And so that gives me a 3 millimeter wall on the bottom. And I'm going to leave it with a 5 millimeter spacing on the left, which means a 3 millimeter spacing on the right. I want it a little thicker on the left where the bolts are going to go through. So now I needed to slide this guy down a little bit so the rounded area was a little bit thicker. Because that's actually what the laptop sits on. So I wanted that a little thicker. So I slid that down. And then these guys are ready to combine into one. So I'll group them. And there is essentially the mount. That's, it was that easy. So now I need to add the bolt holes. So I bring in a hex element. And these are the bolts I'm going to use, an M4 12 millimeter, and I measured them. They're 6.78 flat to flat, and then point to point, it was uh, 7.60 here. So what I did is I grabbed the corner and held the shift key and slid in until I got close to those dimensions. And 6.93 by 8 was perfect. It was slightly bigger, but I know it's going to be a little bit tight once it prints. So I flipped it on its side, and I know the, the bolt hole needs to be four millimeters for this thing to slide through. So now I just need to bring these two guys together. So I'll slide it close and then I'll just go up here to the adjust align tool and I'm gonna center these guys in all directions until I've got what you see here, this piece. So this will form the recessed bolt. So I'll group them together and then make it into a hole. Now I wanna lift it off the bed seven millimeters. I know I want it based on just some testing. So here it is, I just slide it into place. Now, in order to see how deep I'm going in, because I want to recess this three millimeters, so the bolt head is below the surface. So I made it, the case into a hole, and then I'm gonna slide this block till it's even, and then three clicks of the arrow keys, I'm three millimeters in. So that was real easy to do, and then I set it to 20 millimeters from the edge and then made a duplicate and I know that I want the next one to be 60 millimeters further away so I just set it to 80 and now both of them are in line in position so all I need to do is make this case uh, solid and then these are holes so they're going to cut away material so group it all together and I've got my mount and you can see that the the hex bolt will go into that spot, and then there's a hole for the rest of the bolt, the threaded part. So now I'm just going to make a uh, duplicate of it, and then use the mirror tool to make an opposite, the opposite side. And I'll just slide it over, and there it is. There's the two pieces reproduced. Really, really easy to make. So now the only thing left to do is export this for the 3D printer. So I'll go Design, Download for 3D Printing, Export as a .stl file, and it's ready to send off to Simplify 3D. 
So Simplify 3D is what I like to use. Here it is on the bed of my Flashforge Dreamer profile. And this is one solid STL. Um, I didn't separate them, but here's what I used. I used my Flashforge Dreamer PLA setup. Uh, left extruder is what I've got it loaded at. 35% fill is what I'm going to use, and I'm going to include a raft. For the layer height, I'm just going to use a 0.3, so that's it's going to be a little bit rough, but that's fine. Three top and bottom layers, three outer shells. I'm going to use the raft, and here's what I'm going to... I'm going to set it to 0.25. That should give me better separation to peel this raft away, and I'll show you. It worked out pretty good. Uh, infill, like I said, 35%. And I'll leave everything else standard. No supports. Uh, temperature, left extruder is uh, 200 degrees C. Bed is 60 degrees C. Cooling is enabled, and I'm printing at 60 millimeters per second. So this is ready. So I click on prepare to print, and this sliced really quick, and it looks, it looks good on the surface. Um, let me scroll in here so we can look at those bolt holes. I want to make sure there's enough material that it's not going to crush on me when I tighten the bolts. So if I zoom in, you can see that the shells is normally three, but where the bolt is, there's only two, but then it's got solid material in between. So it sliced it nicely. I don't think I'm going to have any problem with this, you know, falling apart or crushing. It looks solid. And as I bring it up, it looks really good. So I'm happy with the way this thing sliced, so it's ready to send off two the Flash Forge Dreamer, I'll just click on the SD card and send it. And here's the end result on the raft. This looks really good for 0.3. I'm really happy with the way this turned out. And look at how easy this raft removes. That 0.25 was perfect. It's a little bit tight here in this corner, but if I pull from this side, it just like pulled away. So that worked out great. Um, it looks just a little bit rough on the bottom, but uh, which are actually the sides. But I'm really pleased with the way it turned out. And here's a close-up of it. So now, let's try the bolts. The first bolt slid right in and pushed down below the surface exactly what I wanted. So let me show you. Now I bumped the camera as I did this, so it's quite shaking. But the bolt just popped through the hole and then I just pushed it down below the surface exactly what I wanted. I couldn't ask for a better fit. So now I needed to line up the holes. So I noticed there was an edge on these things. So I used my deburring tool, or finishing tool as I like to call it. I sell these on my website. I have a link to it in the description below to help support the channel. But it does a great job of taking edges off like this. It, and I don't have to worry about it cutting my thumb. It's not super sharp. And it pivots, so it works really well. Now I use some double-sided foam tape to line these guys up and hold in place. And... You see the line that's there. I need to make sure that the holes were above that line because that's where the shelf is. So once I got these in place, then I tried the netbook and it fit perfectly. I love the way this was going and it hits the lip so it can't easily fall out. So I was ready to drill the holes. So I just took out a pencil, marked the holes where I need to drill, made sure they were above the line. And then I got up my drill and this is really thin wood so it, it drilled real easily. So I drilled the four holes, and then I was ready to mount them. And so I left the sticky tape on to hold it while I did this. It's not hurting anything. So I popped it through and then used a washer and a nut on the other side and hand-tightened them to hold them in place. And then I got out a 7 millimeter socket with an extension and then just hand-tightened them until they were snug and then used a ratchet to finish it off and just make sure they were tight. So now the moment of truth and the netbook fit nicely. And when it slides up, it hits the lip, like I said, so I'm really happy with the way this turned out. And it's balanced on the handle, so it feels really good when I carry it. And if I lean it forward, it slides right out with ease. And it doesn't add that much weight or stick out the back very far. This fit really nice. You know, you can't buy something like this, and that's what I love about the 3D printing, is I can design something custom to what I want and make it work. So this is a great example of 3D printing being very practical and useful around the house. I'm seeing more and more people use their 3D printers for practical prints, and I've been doing that a long time on this channel. If you want to see some of them, check out some of these videos over here. And if you want to keep this channel going, a dollar a month to Patreon helps a lot. And if you're not a subscriber, why not? Click on my logo down there and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you next time on Filament Friday.